Howdy doody buckaroonies, and welcome back to another hilarious episode of the hijinks and misadventures of ya boy Reverb Jones. Today's video is a little bit more chill and also unscripted, so forgive me if it seems a little bit random, but today I wanted to talk about how I like to approach creating generative stuff using my friend the PolyN Tracker here. The PolyN Tracker here can be a standalone performance device and you can make a ton of stuff on it, but I tend to use it as a fancy 8-track sequencer to take advantage of some of the cool little tricks and things it has up its sleeve. What I do with this is more or less similar to what I do with the Keystep Pro, but what makes the Tracker unique with this process is that the Tracker by nature is monophonic, so each of these tracks can only have one note at a time. By doing this, you kind of get something similar to one of my favorite free plugins, which is Stokus, in that we have random polyphonic probability stuff going on, and it's quite a bit of fun, and I think it's a good way to start getting ideas going because there are some other cool things we can do with the tracker. I really enjoy using generative tools to kickstart a writing session or at least start gathering ideas because I find that it's a lot like having a collaborator, but it's a lot more random and chaotic and unpredictable and leads to a lot of ideas I would probably never come up with myself because a lot of these tools follow no real convention. They just spit out random stuff and something happens. I find a lot of value in this because I find that combining the rather mechanical and rigid approach of computer-generated music with my own fleshy meatbag inclinations yields a cool sort of hybrid of organic and electronic, and I personally really enjoy that. It is worth mentioning here that everything I'm going to be doing on the tracker could more or less be accomplished in the DAW for those of you without a tracker, but I'll leave that to you to explore and think about as maybe a little bit of a homework assignment, and maybe you'll take something away from it. For the sake of time in this video, this is going to be a very much simplified setup of what I might normally do with the tracker, but if this video does well and if there's enough interest, I would be happy to show the more expanded and detailed version of all this. So what we're doing today is using the tracker that's feeding MIDI out into my modal cobalt over here. The cobalt is going through a delay and reverb pedal, and that's all going into the DAW, and that's it. So let's talk about making a quick generative performance here, and let's just start from scratch. So I'm gonna go to a new project here. To kick things off here, let's shift select and grab the first four tracks. I'm going to arm these, go to fill, and we're gonna use a random note, 45% density in a minor scale. We're gonna fill random notes ranging from A2 to A5. Great, let's hit fill. So now we need to tell this to play the correct instrument. So the instrument I wanna use is gonna be MIDI channel one. Cool, and let's slow this way on down because we're in the chill zone. All right, let's give that a play and see what we've got. So this sounds like pure chaos, but what we can do to start spicing this up is arm all this, select them again, let's go to effects one, I want to fill each note with the chance effect, with a random chance ranging from 20 to 55%. Let's hit fill. So what we've now done is create a chance of each of these notes occurring, and because on certain steps there is more than one note, we have a chance of a chord occurring. So let's give this a play and hear how it sounds. So now we're starting to get somewhere, and we could expand on this by maybe going into the second effect for each of these and adding something like a micro move, maybe just to get unsynced randomness. We could change the gate length. Uh, roll, ARP, or tons of other stuff. We could even go down if we're using hardware or software and use MIDI CC, so we could learn something in the DAW or use a parameter of our hardware synth to have other random stuff generated, and this is where things really start to get spicy. With this setup, what I like to do next is simply copy everything. So I'm going to shift, grab, 
and go to record copy. Now what we're gonna do is take advantage of the performance mode. So let's select, grab these four and paste. Let's grab another pattern, go back, shift, select, boop, 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 and paste. And let's do four, why not? Shift, select, boop, 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 and paste. So now we have four of the exact same pattern and all these patterns have the same notes, the same chances on each of these and whatever. So we could go in and spice things up by selecting each of these. Let's go to effects, fill, and it's already remembered everything. So we can do this for each of these patterns just to get something a little bit more unique. So fill random and finally pattern four, go back, shift, select, fill, Random. Great. So what makes the performance mode fun with this is we can combine these different patterns. So we could have pattern one on track one and pattern two on two, pattern three on three and pattern four on four. So each of these now has a unique probability of each of these notes. So let's give this a play and see what this sounds like. Cool, so we're starting to sort of get somewhere. Let's go back into the patterns though and tweak a couple things. For the sake of maybe a bit more clarity and things, I'm actually just gonna be lazy and fill this with pentatonic minor stuff on a few of these at least. Let's go into pattern three and do the same. Pattern two. So now pattern one is gonna have stuff that's a little bit more unique and spicy because it's gonna use the full minor scale, but the rest of this should be a bit more harmonically coherent and sound less random. What happens next is where this becomes sort of cool. Each of these patterns can have a different length and we can do other stuff to it. So let's go to pattern one. And what we're gonna do is go to more. I'm going to expand the pattern. I'm gonna do that twice. Now let's go to pattern two. So now pattern one is 128 steps. Pattern two, let's go to more. Let's expand that one once. Let's go to pattern three, maybe expand that one twice. And pattern four, more. Let's uh, expand that one once as well, just to sort of slow everything down here and make something a bit more ambient. Now what we can do is start offsetting the lengths of these things. So let's drop this maybe to 55. Let's drop this one to uh, 121. Let's drop this one down to, I don't know, 43. And you know, just pick a number, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to get now is a lot more movement because these patterns are gonna overlap and interweave in new and interesting ways. And because there's a chance of these notes occurring, we get so much glorious randomness and it can be a lot of fun. So going back into the performance mode now, we can combine these different patterns. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, and four respectively across the four tracks. Let's give this a play and see what we got. So it's sounding pretty cool. Let's bring in the reverb and delay. Now, why not select these tracks and set them to playback in a random order? Let's tweak this synth patch a little bit.
and we've now created something a bit more random and unpredictable. As one last sort of idea here, what I'm going to do is go back into my patterns, go to pattern one, we're going to flip this into pentatonic minor just because this is going to make this a lot easier and less ridiculous sounding. So fill that in. Great. What we're going to do now is let this run for a moment and feed it into some Paul stretch. So let's go into performance mode, set up our patterns, get some Paul stretch ready in the DAW here. All right, we're back with some Paul stretch. Let's capture and let this run for a minute. With that set up, we're now going to pass the input on top of Paul Stretch. So the tracker is going to be playing this generative stuff. We're going to have that going on top of Paul Stretch. Let's set this up to playback randomly. And we're going to run all of this through a little bit of the new Arturia Mellofy. And that's a really cool way to kickstart things. Even though this might not sound super musical and maybe a bit chaotic, it can be interesting to pull ideas from this and start improvising over the top of it to start getting a song to pull itself out of the grand nowhere. And it can be cool to keep this in. Maybe you do end up using it. Maybe it generates a small little loop or idea and you could use that as a foundational element. Or it spits out totally useless garbage, but maybe it gives you an idea to branch off in a new direction. And that's just how I like to approach a lot of this stuff. The other good thing about the tracker here is because this is just spitting out a bunch of MIDI data, I could just record the MIDI into the DAW as well and get some generative MIDI to work with and then feed that to my favorite plugins or other hardware or whatever else I want to do in my session. And then I could load some samples up onto the tracker here and have it spit out some crazy generative drum loops and then bring those into my session and any number of things. It's a really cool way to work and I think it's a good way to escape my typical mindset and approach to creating something and get something different and unexpected and challenge myself to move in maybe a little bit of a different direction. And that wraps everything up for this one. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and hopefully this gives you a few sparks and ideas floating about in your noggin to go experiment with and see what you end up creating. Or maybe alternatively, you think this approach is totally stupid and this is trash and that's fine. And maybe it gives you a better idea and you know, you can use that as well. So in less words, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.